How is my mic? Morning. Forgot to turn on the piano microphone. It's good to have you all here. This the 13th Sunday of Pentecost. I think the first most obvious. It's warm in the church today. I don't know if the short blackout might have caused the outside unit to need to be reset. I don't know. I just know that unit isn't working and this unit's trying real hard to make up for that unit. So we'll see what, uh, if anyone remembers what air conditioning company we use, let me know so I can call the right company because they should still be under warranty, <laughs> as it were. Uh, the other big announcement or the another announcement I have to make is, uh, yes, we have the baptismal font up front. It has water and we have the candle, but there, we're not having a baptismal service during church. Uh, we have a family from... Uh, St. Paul Lutheran Freeport, that church has closed, and uh, they wanted their child baptized, and since they knew about us having their bell, the Areola family are bringing Isabel and uh, Lorenzo, and uh, Lorenzo's 11, and um, Isabel is three, I believe. So that's gonna, that service is gonna be uh, after, I think around 11.30. Uh, after church so uh, but I wanted to have everything set up ahead of time just in case um, the announcements are in your bulletin uh, please remember that uh, Labor Day Monday the office is closed and we won't be distributing food but we will be having church on the third not football games going to be worshiping at another temple I know <laughs> so uh, but your, your presence will be most welcome on Labor Day so uh, are there any announcements I might have missed okay confirmands will be making their stoles after church in my office I just saw the third confirmand coming in so make sure you're here for that and be creative today Seeing nobody coming forward, please stand as you are able. The peace of Christ be with you always.
let us share peace with one another. Let us greet each other in the name of Christ. With you. You didn't get her a coloring book? Peace be with you. No, no, I need a fist bump. Not your feet. Let us continue with worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess the, our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned, we have hurt our community, we have squandered your blessings, we have hoarded your bounty. Forgive us, forgive us grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia. Let us pray together the prayer of the day. O oh God, with all your faithful followers of every age, we praise you, the rock of our life. Be our strong foundation and form us into the body of your Son, that we may gladly minister to all the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, amen. Our first reading comes from Isaiah chapter 51. Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, into the quarry from which you were dug. Look to Abraham your father, and to Sarah who bore you. For he was but one when I called him, but I blessed him and made him many. For the Lord will comfort Zion, he will comfort all her waste places, and will make her wilderness like Eden her desert like the garden of the Lord. Joy and gladness will be found in her, thanksgiving in the voice of song. Listen to me, my people, and give heed to me, my nation, for a teaching will go out from me, and my justice for a light to the peoples. I will bring near my deliverance swiftly, 
My salvation has gone out, and my arms will rule the peoples. The coastlands wait for me, and for my arm they hope. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens will vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and those who live on it will die like gnats. But my salvation will be forever. My deliverance will never be ended. The word of the Lord. Thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called you, answered me, you increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. Oh, Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of God. Second reading is from Romans chapter 12. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, Not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and not all the members have the same function. For we who are many are one, one body in Christ, and individually we are members one of another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministering, the teacher in teaching, the extorter and extorted, extortion, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate in cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. Matthew, the 16th chapter. Oh, Lord. Now, when Jesus came into the district of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, Who do you say that the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, but others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the prophets. Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered, And blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father in heaven. And I tell you, you are Peter, son, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I will give you the keys of the kingdom, and whoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. 
and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. This is the gospel of our Lord. Please be seated, and will the children come forward for the children's message? Let's sit on this side. Sit on this side, Brady. Come on this side. I can see you. There's space over here. You'll sit on this nice cushion over here, okay? Good morning. Not that far. Not that far. I want to see your face. Good to see you this morning. I've got a Jesus did, has his disciples out, and he tells them something. He asks them a question, so I'm going to ask you. Who do you say that Jesus is? That's an interesting question, isn't it? Who do you say? Well, some people said, you know, you are Jeremiah, one of the old prophets. Some people said, you are Elijah, one, another one of the old prophets. But they, they kept on giving these different answers. And then finally, somebody answered right, Peter. But chances are he was guessing because he didn't really figure it out himself. The Holy Spirit put it in his mind. And he said, you are the son of Messiah. You are the God, your son, God's son. And God's son is here to show us how to love each other. And at the end, after he does all this questioning and they figure out what the answer is, do you know what he told them? Don't tell anybody. So I'm going to tell you, don't tell anybody Jesus is the son of God. So if you can't tell anybody... How are you going to tell people that Jesus is the Son of God? How would you show people that Jesus is the Son of God? By punching them? No? By taking their toys and breaking them? No. By leaving your room a mess? So how do you show people that Jesus is Lord? Some of you did it this morning. You hugged, gave a lot of hugs, didn't you? Okay, that's one way. You can show people Jesus is the Messiah by being good, by cleaning your room, by hugging people here at church when you're sharing the peace, by being good, by doing your homework, if you have homework, doing it on time. You may not have homework. But being nice goes a long way, okay? So remember that Jesus loves you and is always with you. And you can show that Jesus is with you by doing good things. Okay? Thank you for coming up. Grace and peace to you from God our Father and from Jesus Christ our Lord and Savior. Amen. This morning, we hear the great confession of St. Peter. You are the Christ, Son of the living God. And the establishment of Peter's confession, or Peter's confession as the church's foundation by Jesus. This is a classical teaching moment in the New Testament. And this is what is considered the founding of the church. And for a large part of the Christian church, that specific church up until 1500s was the Roman Catholic Church. This is the primacy of Peter. What that means is very simply, the Catholic Church considers St. Peter the first pope. So Peter becomes disciple number one. But something is not right. Um... Peter's not the brightest of the disciples. He's a fisherman. He's a businessman. But he's not, you know, he's, he has a tendency to speak at all the wrong times. 
you know at the end he'll deny Jesus three times. And it's upon this foundation that Jesus is building his church. The other thing that's wrong with the picture is that Jesus is in Caesarea Philippi. Now, Caesarea Philippi might not mean anything to you, but Caesarea Philippi is a very popular place for soldiers to take leave and to party. So it has a lot of places where single soldiers can meet people. And I put that in parentheses. Think about it. Uh, the, 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 the Banyas, as it's labeled up there, it's, it's a place where, like hot tubbing, the hot water spring, it's a spring, and there were pools everywhere. So Caesarea Philippi was the Las Vegas of its day, which also was a very popular place for soldiers to go spend some time before going to war in the 1940s. Caesarea Philippi was a city designed for fun and partying, just like Vegas. It's also a popular place to make a pilgrimage to visit the Temple of Pan and to go to the Banyas Hot Spring Grotto. But also there is a cave that's, that's uh, they considered a bottomless pit that was considered the gate to Hades. So when Jesus is talking about the walls of Hades, he's actually pointing to an actual place. The headwaters of the Jordan begin at Banyas. So it's also a very sacred place. Now, this is not a place that one would expect to find Jesus with his disciples. You would normally think a synagogue, right? Place of worship or out in a field, out in the middle of no place, feeding the 5,000. This is after the feeding of 5,000. So Jesus is with his disciples this is not a place where one would expect Jesus to establish his church. It's not exactly the place where you'd expect to run into Jesus. You wouldn't expect them to go there. In the midst of all the distractions, the lights and the shows that are, uh, the world offer, Jesus asks his disciples, who do people say that the Son of Man is? He's asking his disciples in the middle of pagan temple central, Sin City, who do people say I am? The disciples quickly call out what they think is the right answer. And if you've ever been in confirmation, what's always the right answer? Jesus. You get 50% at least. You answer Jesus. Well, the disciples are pretty much doing the same thing. Some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, others Jeremiah, others one of the prophets. They're hoping to get one right. Peter steps up and gives a Holy Spirit-inspired answer. You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus knows Peter. Peter's the one that he helped back into the boat after he started to slip down. Jesus knows where the answer came from because he says, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for flesh has not revealed that to you, but my Father in heaven. That's almost the saying, oh, bless his little heart. God gave you that answer. But on you, I'm going to build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against you. I will give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Jesus knows that the Holy Spirit provided Peter the answer. A church building is a beautiful structure, and it can be inspirational. But this building... What we're sitting in right now is not what Jesus meant when he said, I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Jesus did not create the papacy. He did not create Vatican II. He would build, he wouldn't build his church on one person. The Greek words for rock and church are Petra and Ecclesia. 
both are which feminine tense, which means that Jesus is not referring to Peter, and he's not referring to a building. Jesus is going to build his church on the confession that Peter makes. Let me explain. In Isaiah this morning, the first lesson, the prophet says, Listen to me, you that pursue righteousness, you that seek the Lord. Look to the rock from which you were hewn, to the quarry from which you were dug. Again, Isaiah is not referring to a geographic location or a building. He's referring to the quarry that was established in the covenant that God has with Abraham. Before Jesus, the people built the community around God's covenant with Abraham and his descendants. Jesus is in Caesarea Philippi, another wilderness area, with his disciples. And he tells them that the church is built on the promise that he is the Christ of the living God. Christ means anointed. He's the anointed one of the living God. His church, his community, his family is built on the promise that God continues his presence among God's people through Jesus. That grace and mercy. How many of you heard the phrase, grace and mercy shall follow you all your days? You know the verb is wrong? It's not follow. Grace and mercy chases after you. Think of a hound chasing a deer or a rabbit. That's how God's grace and mercy comes after us. It just doesn't follow behind us like a little dog on a leash. He's coming after us with intent and purpose. So the grace and mercy that God is providing, that promise is so strong and so encompassing that the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. I read an article this week that changed the ending of my sermon. It's an article written by Peggy Hahn, the executive director of LEAD, and she writes, and I didn't, I didn't copy the whole, I did, I'm not going to read the whole article to you. She writes, what does it mean when in-person worship is so random? What does it mean for a digital world? What does it mean when this is happening at a time of great isolation, mental health challenges, and loneliness all around us? As studies by the Pew Research Center have documented, there is an increase in the percentage of individuals who claim no religious affiliation, a growing number of young people who are choosing not to join churches and patterns of participation in worship and congregational activities are changing. These pressing social shifts require new ways of being Christian community. In the words of a pastor that worked with LEAD, Now, in, he, go, he writes, I spent all of 2020 trying to convince my congregation that digital worship, online worship, is really worship. And now in 2023, I spend all my time trying to convince myself that this is actually true. It is through baptism, holy communion, worship, prayer, and teaching the faith that the church will be renewed. Yet how do we get people in the room to experience the faith through these ancient practices? Gathering and belonging to a Christian community is more confusing and in some ways interesting than ever. Congregations that started have started drive-in worship. In other words, people in parked cars using the AM radio. We have a transceiver right there. I don't know how far it goes, but we have one. Maybe we'll try it. Outdoor worship services. Too hot in Texas. Other forms of gathering may find these new expressions of gathering that will live on past this time in our history. Leaders can't sort this out, out alone. We need to be in conversation with leaders across the church and even across the street with other denominations to unpack new ways to gather people in. The decline of young people in the church is evidence that the church has become disconnected with its purpose. When the faith community cannot change to include its own children, something is wrong. Resistance to new people, new ideas, new opportunities can feel threatening or exhausting to those 
who are already focused on preserving the past. It takes time, trust, and collaboration for people to recognize that sacred traditions will not at all be discarded even as new things happen. The old isn't thrown out, just we're just doing something new. Yet in some congregation, it feels like time is running out. Lead is seeing congregations step up with intentional, even sacrificial hospitality. They have a bilingual worship service with a cross-cultural music. They're focusing on preaching on the love of God. People are sticking around. As one grandchild told her grandma, I like it here. These people smile at me. They are teaching us that church culture can become warm, forgiving, genuine, and caring. The church that Jesus Christ founded in Caesarea Philippi is still here. And it encompasses pe the people of the past, present, and those who are yet to come. Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone he was the Messiah. I guess what he was doing was setting a standard for us. Don't tell anyone Jesus is the Messiah. Show them that Jesus is the Messiah. How we treat each other, how we treat the stranger around us, speaks volumes. This is our guide in these new and strange and uncertain times of the church. I can tell you, because of our outreach to the community on the first Monday of the month, I get a lot more phone calls asking, are y'all still doing that? Are y'all still doing that? That's how you reach out to the community. That's how you make your presence known. Show people that Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. 
I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Confident that God receives our joys and concerns, let us offer our prayers for the church, those in need, and all of creation. God of Sarah and Abraham, inspire your church to pursue righteousness in its ministry. Equip us to share your compassion that unites us as one family of faith. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. Remind us that from the beginning of creation, you knit together a world meant for harmony. Protect and restore the wasted places to joy and gladness. Lord, we need relief from this terrible heat, and we need rain. We ask that you grant us the relief we need and the appropriate rain to water our land. Hear us, O oh God. Stir the leaders of nations and towns, militaries and courts to respond to your teaching. Let your call for justice reach all people and bring deliverance where there is oppression. Hear us, O God. Show your steadfast love and faithfulness to those in despair. Increase their strength care for all who feel low, keep safe any in the midst of trouble, and protect vulnerable people from harm. Hear us, O God. Encourage those who offer their gifts and talents in service to your church. Energize this congregation's rostered and lay ministers, musicians, teachers, greeters, and administrators so that they may be transformed in sharing your grace. Lord, we ask that you encourage those who have been absent from church for an extended period of time to return. We need them in our midst, and they need you, Lord. Hear us, O God. All of the saints, God of all the saints, death is overcome in Christ's resurrection. We rejoice with the faithful departed, sustain us in hope until we come at last to our great heavenly home. Hear us, O God. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray in the name of the one who reconciled all creation to himself, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Please be seated as we continue with this morning's offerings.
Let us pray. God of field and forest, sky and sea, you are giver of all good things. Sustain us with these gifts of your creation and multiply your graciousness in us that the world may be fed with your love through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty, and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior, Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death in the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so, with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. All people are called to Christ's table. Come, eat what is good.
Now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in the one true faith. Amen. The God who calls across the cosmos and speaks in the smallest seed, bless, keep, and sustain you now and to the end of the age. Amen. Peace, share the harvest. Thanks be to God.